on UCF Sports Night, stronger, faster, and better. We take a look at the UCF Strength and Conditioning Team. And we talk with Director of Strength and Conditioning, Ed Ellis, about how important his department is to every UCF sport. All that and more next on UCF Sports Night. UCF Sports Night is brought to you by UCF TV. Hey there and welcome once again to UCF Sports Night. I'm Jeff Sharon. Thank you so much for stopping by. We've got a big show for you today, including a look at the UCF Strength and Conditioning Team. But before we get to that, we've got a look at the highlights of the week, starting with men's basketball on Tuesday night as they took the floor once again at UCF Arena for their second game of the season. And it was their first game of the Glenn Wilkes Classic as they took on Howard University. The Knights came in ready for their second game of the season, and this one was about the reserves, especially early. The Knights bench outscored Howard's 31 to 19, and two bench guys had double figures. Taylor Young led all Knights with 15 points, and Keith Clanton put up 10 points and 10 rebounds. Then the starters took over with Dave Diakite chiming in. He had 10 points, 11 boards, including this huge jam on the follow. Then later on the break, watch Dave go up for the huge block on the defensive end. The Knights would wear down the Bison, leading by as much as 17 points and eventually taking a 68-59 victory. Then it was off to Daytona Beach on Friday for the Knights' second game of the Glen Wilkes Classic against Auburn at the Ocean Center. And the Knights would tame the Tigers from start to finish as they completely outplayed Auburn, led by A.J. Tyler. The junior forward racked up a career-high 19 points, helping UCF take a 15-3 lead out of the gates. In all, five Knights finished in double figures, including Dave Diakite, who had 12 points, 10 boards, and this thunderous jam, extending the Knights' lead to as much as 21. And UCF would get its first ever win over an SEC opponent, dismantling the Auburn Tigers 84-74. Meanwhile, back at the arena, the women's basketball team opened up their home schedule with their local rivals from Bethune-Cookman. The Knights struggled a bit in the first half, but still led by 11 points at the break. In the second half, though, UCF would take over thanks to Marche White, who had a fantastic game. She came off the bench to score a career-high 23 points on 9 of 17 from the field, including four three-pointers. She also tallied seven rebounds and six assists. Chelsea Wiley also pitched in with 17 points. And although Emma Cannon spent much of the night in foul trouble, Danae Daniels had her back with a double-double of her own, 10 points and 10 boards. And UCF would more than double up Bethune in the second half and go on to the 34-point victory. The final football Saturday of the 2009 season on campus, and it was senior day at the Bright House as UCF bid farewell to 13 seniors playing their final game at their alma mater. Then the Knights came out of the gates blazing against Tulane. Third play from scrimmage, Bryn Harvey sprints 50 yards for the touchdown, and that puts the Knights on the board 7 to nothing. They led 14 to nothing at the break and then put Tulane away for good in the third. After Bryn Harvey scored his third touchdown of the day, the defense comes up big. Travis Timmons picks up this fumble, and the Knights are in business. On the next play, Brett Hodges to Kamar Aiken, a gorgeous catch, 29 yards out for the score, 28-0 UCF. Then after a Josh Robinson interception, Hodges again finds Aiken, coming right at you from 16 yards away, 35-0 Knights. And then next possession, the Knights march 97 yards on the green wave, and Jonathan Davis caps it off with a touchdown run from nine yards out. And UCF goes on to win the most lopsided shutout in Conference USA history, 49-0 over Tulane on Senior Day. Meanwhile, back in Daytona, the men's basketball team came crashing back down to earth against Niagara. The Knights turned the ball over 23 times, and that proved to be fatal for them as they fall to the Purple Eagles, 63 to 46. That brought us to Sunday and the third game in as many days as the Knights finished up the Glen Wilkes Classic against Drake. And Isaac Sosa was the story here, five of nine from the field, all from three-point range, 15 points to lead UCF. 
Late in the game, the defense took over. Keith Clanton with the big block underneath. And then Dave Diakite with the steal, and he gets the wide open double clutch jam. And the Knights advance to four and one on the season with a 59 to 50 win. And of course, for more news scores and features on every UCF sport, all you have to do is log on to UCFAthletics.com. Don't go away. Coming up next here on UCF Sports Night, it's probably the most important part of every sport here at UCF, and it's the part that you don't see. We take a look at the UCF strength and conditioning staff when UCF Sports Night returns. Knights fans join the men's basketball team on Saturday, November 28th, as they take on the Albany Great Danes at UCF Arena at 5 p.m. More information at 407-UCF-1000 and at UCFAthletics.com. Attendance people, listen up. Albertson. Here. Barnes. Here. Swain. Here. Reyes. Here. Perez. Here. Clark. Here. Gerbic. Here. Sellers. Here. Nguyen. Here. Omey. Here. And Miller. Here. In our classrooms and throughout our community, UCF stands for opportunity. Welcome back to UCF Sports Night. It's a part of college sports that's extremely important, yet it's a part that you don't see. I'm talking about strength and conditioning, something that every student athlete at UCF participates in and spends nonstop hours working on. Fortunately, here at UCF, we have one of the best strength and conditioning coaching staffs in the entire country, and they spend lots of hours themselves helping to make every UCF student athlete a little faster, stronger, and better each day. We get a look at the UCF strength and conditioning staff in our Sports Night Spotlight. All sports and all athletes need to be explosive. Uh, they need to be powerful. They need to be flexible. Uh, we, need, we need to try to help prevent injury. And it's, it's become more prevalent and people are understanding that it's, it's a necessary part of sport these days because athletes are specializing in their, their sport earlier and they're starting weight training earlier. So if they're not doing it, their uh, propensity for injury increases and they're sitting on the bench or sitting in the training room as opposed to being on the field or the court with their team. A tennis player is not going to train like a baseball player. Uh, a football player is not going to train like a golfer. So we try to look for things that they do on the court, on the field, um, in their specific area, and we try to simulate that in the weight room. Uh, with my sport coaches, I work uh, pretty close with them a lot. Um, each summer we get together and talk about our training plan. So we talk about uh, the different kind of power aspects we need to look for. A lot of it is just trying to find that area that they need to improve on and then we can go forward. And so once we get that together, our training plan is great. The coaches are usually there at practice. They're pointing out things. And so we go together and work with that. I think uh, how we work with our sport coaches is, is extremely important and what we're trying to give them as far as where their athletes are doing. The sport coach does a great job of making sure that they stay within the limited hours they have per NCAA guidelines. But if they have, let's say, two hours a week in, in the strength conditioning department, we try to get two hours a week out of them. If we, if we are allowed to, we're going to get two. And uh, we may have to separate that into three days and, and, and get the hours that way. But uh, any time that we have available to train them, then we have them in there and we, and we train the athletes. If you're putting the hard work in in the summer, maybe the other person at Tulsa or UAB is not putting that same work in. So then when you start to compete, you're going to be better than them. You're going to last longer. You're going to be stronger all around. The kids that I work with, they've seen the rewards and they, they know what they're working for now and they understand, and I, and I tell my teams too from the start, look, we're here to win championships, I'm here to get rings, and I'm being selfish as far as that's concerned, because I'm gonna push you to the point where you're, you're gonna understand that you're not gonna back down. You know, you're gonna be successful, you're gonna wanna keep pushing back. And it's hard for, for people to do day to day, um, because it is relentless. But that's, what the, that's the way the coaches are here, I mean, the coaches are here to win championships. So we got to be relentless in, in all aspects of the sport. The most rewarding thing I would say from a strength conditioning coach would be when the athletes come to you personally, the coach, thanks. This has improved my game. I, I just want to match, you know, and I felt like I could go play in another match immediately after. You know, when they come back and they're saying, you know, this strength conditioning is for real. It's helping me be a better athlete. I'm like, see, this is what we've been working for all year. It's going to pay off. All that hard work, all those hours are going to pay off. 
And for more information on the UCF strength and conditioning staff, visit UCFAthletics.com. Don't go away. Coming up next here on UCF, we sit down with the Director of Strength and Conditioning, Ed Ellis, to talk about how important a role his staff plays in making every UCF sport that much better every year. Stick around. UCF Sports Night returns in a moment. Night fans, the nightmare has returned to UCF Arena for basketball season again. Season tickets for the men's basketball team are available now. More information at 407-UCF-1000 and at UCFAthletics.com. Welcome back to UCF Sports Night. Joining me now, the uh, the Director of Strength and Conditioning here at UCF, Ed Ellis. Joining us now, Coach, how are you? All right, how you doing? Good, thanks for coming on the show. Uh, I wanted to ask you about, you know, just in general, how the Strength and Conditioning Department works and how important it is here at UCF. But first, tell me a little bit about your background, how you came here to UCF and things like that. Well, uh, it started, I've been in the business for 22 years. So I started at the University of Alabama. Uh, I, I went to school there, I was on a track team. Uh, from there, I went to be a graduate assistant at the University of Arkansas. After that, leaving there, went to the University of Mississippi. My first head job was at Illinois State back in 1990. So I've been a head coach now for going on 19 years. Uh, went to another stop at Wake Forest University, Georgia Tech, and that's where I met Coach O'Leary. Uh, from that point, uh, I found this opening here. Coach O'Leary came here, obviously, and uh, just something that was very important. You know, I, I thought he did a great job when he was at Georgia Tech. And, opportunity to come back and work for him again and came over here to UCF and, and since then uh, you've been here. Has he been quite you've been around quite a bunch of places. Oh yeah uh, probably too many but it's, it's been good. <laughs> Tell me about uh, how the department here at UCF has changed since you first got here. Well I mean really we kind of instill our own my own belief in what we need to be done in, in the program and it's really Working hard, getting it, getting everyone on board with what you want to do. Main thing is trying to make a better athlete, stronger, faster, quicker, and more explosive, and getting everyone on board. And and doing that is is who is working around you. I have some great assistants. Uh, two of them have been with me now over 10 years, and I think that's that's the most important thing. The people with you make the program. So I think everyone's on board now of what we need to get done, and and really the what we're trying to do every day is make a more explosive, powerful faster athlete and and we try to do that every day you know we hear all the time about you know strength and conditioning especially in football and a little bit in basketball too but i mean you guys are in charge of every sport here in ucf from golf to volleyball to rowing everything how are, are all of these sports like really different in terms of how you approach them for strength and conditioning or are they really all the same you just tweak things here and there well it's probably more like the later th part louder part thing you said is uh, is is they're all basically the same, but we try to incorporate a lot of specific things that they're gonna do in their sport. I mean, you, you're trying to get the athlete, like I said earlier, faster, more explosive, and there's certain exercises to do that in all, in all the sports, but uh, rowing, for instance, are you gonna use more back and, and pulling motions? You know, football's gonna use more explosive hand movements and things, so everything has a little tweaks that you'll do, but for the most part, it comes from the ground up, exploding, using your legs, and, and the exercises we do are going to come from that. Tell me about some of the new things that are going on in strength and conditioning at the college level that you guys keep abreast of and work on every year. Well, we're always going to different conferences and, and, and just looking, uh, you know, clinics and, and trying to pick up ideas, you know, and there's, there's a lot of things out there, some, you know, working on balance and flexibility and, and movement. and. There's a lot of good things out there, but it really all comes back to going back to what used to be, uh, and that's really just working on your, your abs, your core, your, your, your strength levels, and, and pushing and pulling. And it's really the basic movements, and they, everyone just kind of puts a little twist on it. So although there's some new things out there, it always comes back to the old. I think that the, you know, and, and I think the fans, you know, need to know this too, is that 
this is one of the most underappreciated areas of being a college athlete. How many hours, how much work do these student athletes in every sport put into working with you guys and helping them get, you know, bigger, stronger, faster? Well, I mean, it's a year-round process. You know, you, you never see, you see them on the field, you see them on the court, but you don't see all the work they do off the court. And, and they really do a lot. I mean, hours and hours. They do a lot on their own just to get better. And you don't see that, but uh, truthfully, they, they really work hard. And, and the better they are, the more they're working off the field and that's, that's, or off the court. And that's, that's the important part. I know you guys do such a fantastic job. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. And we'll see you again down the line. Thank you. All right. Uh, Director of Strength and Conditioning, Ed Ellis, here at UCF. For more information on the strength and conditioning staff, visit ucfathletics.com. Don't go away. Coming up next here on UCF Sports Night, we've got our plays of the week and also look at the week ahead. Don't go away. We're back in just a moment. Night fans, it's time to armor up for your defending Conference USA champion women's basketball team. Season tickets are available now. More information at 407 UCF 1000 and at UCFathletics.com. Welcome back to UCF Sports Night. Our plays of the week are on the way in just a moment. And who's going to have the top play? Is it Dave Diakite or Dave Diakite? We'll get to that in a moment. But first, here's a look at some news and notes from this week. UCF quarterback Brett Hodges is taking home another award. He's been named the Bright House Student Athlete of the Week once again for his performance against number 12 Houston. Hodges completed 21 of 25 passes for 241 yards and this 24-yard touchdown pass to his freshman receiver, Quincy McDuffie. The senior quarterback from Winter Springs completed 12 passes in a row at one point during the game. That's the second longest consecutive completion streak in school history behind only Dante Culpepper's 15 in a row back in 1997. Hodges and the Knights finished their regular season against UAB this Saturday. James Gathers and Bruce Miller of the football team have played themselves onto the watch list for the Ted Hendricks Award, which goes to the player voted as the nation's best defensive end. Gathers and Miller went into the two-lane game tied for the team lead in sacks with 10. That's good enough for first in Conference USA and eighth best in the country. They're also nodded for first in the conference in tackles for loss with 12 and a half. The dynamic defensive duo have contributed mightily to UCF's run defense this season as well enabling the Knights to rank third in the nation in run defense, giving up just 81 and a half yards per game, trailing only number two Alabama and number three Texas in that category. The Knights are also seventh nationally in sacks and ninth in tackles for loss. In volleyball news, congratulations to senior Erin Campbell. She's been named to the All-Conference USA second team for this season. The Kansas City native is only the second night ever to pick up an All-Conference USA selection. Campbell is in UCF's all-time top 10 in six different categories. She's 6th in kills, 5th in digs, and 8th in sets played. This season, Campbell led UCF in kills, kills per set, attempts, solo blocks, and total points. She also reached a rare career milestone, becoming just the fourth night ever to reach 1,000 kills and 1,000 digs. Aaron and the Knights have one more match to go this season against their rivals from USF next week. On we go to our Sports Night Plays of the Week. Play number three, football against Tulane. Third play from scrimmage, third down and one. And Bryn Harvey gets 50 yards and a touchdown. And that pretty much sealed it as UCF went on to the victory on Senior Day. Play number two, men's basketball against Howard at UCF Arena and Dave Diakite. Watch him come from behind and get the huge block on the fast break. Check this out again in slow motion as Dave gets way up there. Man, anyone who flies that high should need a license. Play number one, same game, same player. Watch Taylor Young drive in from the wing he can't hit, but Super Dave flies in from the Raptors to get the follow-up put-back jam. 
Take a look at the remix as Dave Diakite's High Wire Act helps the Knights to a victory at home over Howard. And those are your Sports Night Plays of the Week. We head into the month of December in the week ahead. Things begin with an ending as the volleyball team finishes up its season with a big match against their rivals from USF on Wednesday. First serve is at 6 p.m. in Tampa. The Saturday after Thanksgiving, the football team is in Birmingham for their season finale as they take on UAB. Kickoff is set for 1.30 p.m. in Birmingham, and you can hear it on the Knights' flagship station, 740 The Game. Meanwhile, back at home, men's basketball is in action. They face the Great Danes of Albany. Tip-off at UCF Arena is set for 5 p.m., and you can see it on UCFAthletics.com or hear it on 740 The Game. Tuesday, the month of December begins with more men's basketball as they take the UCF Arena floor once again to face Newberry College. Tip is at 7 p.m., and you can see it live on UCFAthletics.com and hear it on 740 The Game. Then on Wednesday, the women's basketball team gets back into action. They head on the road to Jacksonville to face the JU Dolphins. Tip is at 7 p.m. and you can hear it on UCFAthletics.com. Thursday, tune in for the George O'Leary Call-In Show presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. Join the coach and the voice of the Knights, Mark Daniels, as they talk UCF football every Thursday live from Buffalo Wild Wings location in Waterford Lakes. You can hear the show on the Knights flagship station, 740 The Game, or at UCFAthletics.com. Also on Sunday, tune in for UCF Sports Today with Coach George O'Leary, presented by Holler Classic. Join the coach and Pat Clark for insight, analysis, and in-depth features at noon on WESH 2, and also throughout the week on UCF TV, Bright House Sports Network, and Sun Sports. And a quick reminder, you can catch UCF Sports Night every Tuesday on UCF TV. The show also airs throughout the week on Bright House Sports Network and Sun Sports. Check your local listings for details. And for all the latest news, scores, and features from every UCF sport, log on to UCFAthletics.com, your 24-7 online home for UCF sports. And of course, if you want to catch this edition again or you want to see any of our archived editions of UCF Sports Night, you can anytime you want online. All you've got to do is visit UCF TV's website, which is www.ucf.tv. Well, that'll do it for us for this week here on UCF Sports Night. Thank you so much for joining us. For all of us here at UCF Athletics and UCF TV, I'm Jeff Sharon saying thanks for watching and go Knights! Hey, this is LT from 101.1 WJRR. You're listening to the best sounds of area music. UCF Athletics, Access Magazine, and WJRR are proud to support local artists. You can find more great artists by going online at www.wjrr.com and also accessmag.com. And by listening to Native Noise each and every Sunday at 11 o'clock. UCF Sports Night is brought to you by UCF TV.